Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. I love using items that I find at thrift stores, garage sales, side of the road, and upcycle them for resale or to keep for myself. <laughs> uh, both of these projects I might want to keep because they turn out so amazing. So for our first project, we are going to be using some chippy old spindles that I found and we're going to be using IOD's new floral anthology transfer to make these chippy spindles that are already amazing even more amazing this is a great one it comes in four sheets so it gives you lots of lots of options and i feel like not only this transfer but a lot of iod's tra transfers kind of lend towards that new cottage core style which i feel like is very floral and romantic looking and i absolutely love this transfer now let me be honest with y'all in this video is the first time i have ever used a transfer and i was so nervous so if you are like me and nervous to try transfers watch this video because y'all they are so easy to use and they look so good so just y'all just gotta watch y'all gotta watch it's good for the second project, we're going to be making over this green Lloyd Loom chair that I picked up at a garage sale for next to nothing. And it's kind of a smaller chair, so I thought it would be beautiful in my baby girl's nursery. So we're going for vintage nursery vibes on this one, kind of shabby chic. I don't know. I have lots of stuff going on in her nursery but I feel like this chair fits in perfectly. And we're gonna be using the IOD Peonies stamp, which y'all can see I've already been loving and using. I really like this stamp because it is bigger. And I feel like these bigger stamps, you get a lot of bang for your buck because you can use it all together or you can just use pieces of it. This one is also very pretty and romantic looking and I really, really like this stamp. I cannot wait for y'all to see how I transform these two projects. Please leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite project that I worked on. And if you were also kind of nervous like me to use a transfer, if you feel like you have the confidence to now try one, trust me y'all, it is easy. And if you want to get any of these IOD products, I will leave a link in the description below where you can go find an IOD stockist nearest you. All right, y'all, let's get to these projects. For this first project, we're gonna be making a ladder. For the size of my ladders, I personally like to use two by fours and just cut them to size. So this is a two by four by eight that I picked up at my local hardware store. I like to cut them down to size because it just depends on the type of spindle that I'm using. Like if I was using a more smaller spindle, then I might want a dainty smaller side, but we're using big, thick, chunky spindles. So I'm gonna cut this two by four straight down the middle and I'm gonna keep it thick and chunky just like my spindles. Now, if you do not have a table saw, they have these furring strips at Home Depot. So if you can find one and a straight one that's not too messed up, you can use that without having to cut anything down. After my two by fours were cut, I just sanded them down to make sure everything was smooth. And now I'm ready to add my paint. I wanna paint these white. I'm using the antique white paint from Walmart in a flat finish. I'm just gonna put one coat of paint on here and then I'm going to lightly distress these using my orbital sander. All right, now we gotta deal with these chippy old spindles. So as you can see, I have some nails coming out of them. So I'm gonna use, it's called a nail puller, <laughs> and I will put a link to it down in the description below, but you literally just clamp onto the nail and it pulls right out. You wanna make sure all your nails are off. You do not want to put this wood in your saw with nails in it. These spindles are not even. One side is longer than the other. So I wanna cut them down and make sure everything is the same size. So put two spindles together. That way I have one for reference and I'm gonna cut them both down. So like where the wood part is showing, I'm just gonna go ahead and take that off. That way, mostly my spindle is white. And then I'm gonna use this side 
as the my measurement for all my spindles so I can make sure I cut them all down to the same size. So you see how I'm using it as a measurement? And you just cut it down. And now this is gonna be the size of all my spindles. These are my beautiful chippy old spindles next to my freshly painted size and they are just looking a little bit new to me. So what I decided to do is I added a little bit of water to this gray chalk paint and you can do this with any color paint that you have. Just add a little bit of water to it and it creates a wash. So I'm just going to brush it onto my white paint and then I'm gonna come back with a paper towel and just kind of wipe it off. And this is just going to give it a little bit of a gray hue and a little bit of a more aged look that I think will pair better with my chippy spindles. Now we are ready to attach spindles to the sides. I like to put my spindles one foot apart. So I'm gonna make a mark on the sides where the spindle needs to go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my own countersink bit because I don't have one. I should probably get one, but I don't. So if you don't have a countersink bit, this is how you can make it work. You want two drill bits, one small one and one big one. So you're gonna take your small drill bit and you're gonna drill it all the way through the side of the ladder. And then you're gonna take your bigger drill bit and just do a little bit at the top, just enough room for the screw to go all the way in and be totally hidden. Then you wanna take your smaller drill bit and drill a hole in the center of each side of your spindle. Once all the holes are drilled, we are ready to put this ladder together. I'm gonna be using these star top screws. They are three and a half inches long, so plenty long enough to be able to put these chunky sides and these chunky spindles together and make this ladder super sturdy. Since all the holes are already drilled, this piece is gonna come together really quickly now. I like to put my screw through the side and then line up my spindle and then you just drill it in till it stops and there you go. So easy. Now this ladder is eight feet long the entire length of my two by four. And when I make a big ladder, I always make them really tall because most of the time at the store, you can only find four foot ladders or five foot ladders. So if somebody wants a tall ladder, they will come to me. And I am so glad I left this eight feet long because it just adds an extra layer of drama to this beautiful piece. To fill in the holes made by the screws, I'm just gonna use IOD's air dry clay. This is what I've been using and it works great. I just put in the clay a little bit higher than the hole and once it dries, I go back and I sand it flat and then I'm gonna recreate the paint finish and you will never be able to tell how this ladder is put together. It blends in perfectly. Before I apply the transfer to my wood, I want to seal the ladder using this water-based polyacrylic from Minwax. It is in a matte finish. So when you're putting a transfer on wood for best success, you want to first seal your piece with a water-based sealer. You want to put the transfer on and then you wanna go back and seal the piece after. This is best practice for wood and furniture. And of course there's exceptions to the rules, like say you wanted to put a transfer on a window or a mirror, then you probably would not want to seal it because that would change the look of the piece. You know, it would give the mirror and the window this filmy residue. So just use your own judgment on when to seal and not seal a piece. But since this is wood, we definitely wanna seal it up because I want this transfer to be successful. Now I wanna talk a little bit about this cottage core style. So if you heard this term and you are wondering what this new style is, I personally think it's just a mix of farmhouse and shabby chic and a cottage look. So if you've already been doing these styles, then you're already doing cottage core. I do feel like it has a little bit of a more romantic look to it, a more earthy look to it. 
And that's why I think IOD's transfers tie in perfectly to this new style that is trending. When you get your transfers, it's gonna come in a booklet like this. So it is really easy to see everything that you have to work with and the ones you end up not using, you can just leave on here and it's really easy to store and see what you have left to use. I'm gonna start cutting out some of the smaller ones and figuring out where I want to put them on the ladder. I am loving the color palette on this particular transfer. So what I did was I used some painter's tape and I just taped it up where I wanted to go. And now I'm kind of cutting it so I'll be able to easily apply the transfer around my spindle and around the ladder. And now I'm just going to pull the backing off. It stays right in place. And I'm gonna put another piece of tape at the bottom just to ensure that my transfer stays in place as I'm applying it. Your transfer will come with this tool to help you apply the transfer to your surface. And all you have to do is just rub this little plastic piece over your transfer, and then it will be transferred onto the wood. Y'all, it is literally that simple. It was not hard. I did not have to push hard. You just kind of rub it and the transfer comes right off. Even around this spindle, it was really easy. All I needed to do was push down a little bit and the transfer came right off even in all the details of this little spindle. Look at that. It looks like it's been on there its entire life. Y'all, I am so excited about how this came out. I just cannot believe I have never used this product before. It looks so beautiful. It is so my style. I just love this so much. Now, when you go to pull off the clear backing, just do it slowly because if there's any small spots where the transfer did not come off the backing, all you need to do is push down in that one spot and you'll be able to fix that little mistake. So I just wanted to note that y'all don't pull it off quickly. Take your time. Just make sure everything has transferred. I'm just gonna continue to apply transfers of the ladder well, where I feel like they would look good. And once I got the hang of it, it did not take me long at all to put these transfers on. What took the longest was actually putting the ladder together. That was a big project. Putting these transfers on went super fast. And you can use these transfers for so many different things. You can put them on furniture. You you can put them on windows. You can even put them on upholstery. I am so excited to be using some of these in future videos because I want to try all of these things. To ensure that your transfer has fully adhered to the piece, you wanna take your transfer tool and just rub it over the transfer. I am also using my hand and my fingernail just to make sure the transfer is fully in all the little cracks of the spindles. And then this is the magic. You're gonna take some sandpaper, I'm using 220, and just rub it over the transfer. This is not necessary, but this is what I wanted to do. And man, it just makes the transfer look like it has become one with the piece and ha has always been there. Once again, I was just in total awe of how good this looked. Once a few transfers were applied to the ladder, I cut out some more pieces and taped them to the ladder just so I could kind of get a layout of where I wanted them to go. And then once these transfers are on the ladder, then I can see if I want to build and add more to that. But man, y'all, this ladder came out so good. I can't wait for y'all to see the final product. I'm finished the ladder, but I want to show y'all how much I have left of this transfer so i still have this whole sheet i didn't even use any of this sheet so i still have a lot of this left and then i have this whole big transfer left i ended up using mostly just the small pieces so i still have about half of this transfer left to use on another project
The first thing that I need to do is give this chair a good paint job. I'm just using the white chalk paint that I have in my sprayer. My sprayer will make quick work of painting this chair and I'm not worried about getting paint on the cushion. It's just a little bit of chalk paint. It's not going to mess anything up. Y'all look how quick this goes. I love this paint sprayer. To reupholster this chair, I want to use drop cloth and I want to create my own pattern using this peony stamp from IOD. It comes with two sheets of stamp. You have the big flowers and then you have some smaller flowers and then you also have several leaf options. When you first get your stamps, they're going to be on a backer and you can pull your stamp off the backer. It does take a little bit of elbow grease. Do not worry, you are not going to break your stamp. You just want to pull it off. And anytime you're using a stamp for the first time, you wanna make sure you take a very light grit sandpaper and just rub it over the stamp. When it comes from the factory, it is very smooth. So you just wanna add a little bit of texture to it so that way the ink will adhere better to the stamp. Another option when using stamps is to just cut it off the backer. And that way it gives you a little bit of extra room to be able to hold your stamp. And that's what I actually ended up doing with this particular stamp set, just cause they were so big, it just made more sense to cut them out because I just needed a little bit of extra room to be able to hold that stamp to properly stamp it down instead of having to stick it on a whole separate backer. Perfect. I wanna keep the color palette on here very neutral. This is going in my baby girl's room. So I decided to use this pink color that I have used before in her room where it's gonna give, it's gonna stand out a little bit, but not too much. Now you can use ink on your stamps, but you can also use paint in any color. You just need to purchase this brayer from IOD and you just roll out your paint and then you apply it to your stamp just like you would the ink and then you turn it over and push it down. And I have to say, these larger stamps were so much easier to use. Since they're so big, they barely move around. So, and of course I'm doing a flat surface, which is always easier, but I did find the bigger stamps were easier to use than the smaller stamps. I started off with just doing two big peony stamps and now we're going to add the leaves. So all of your stamps come with these masks and this allows you to layer your pieces. So we want to apply the mask over our stamp that we've already put on the drop cloth and now I'm going to add some paint to my leaves. Then you're gonna apply your leaves to the drop cloth and what's gonna happen is it's only going to print where the mask is not. So once I pull up the mask, it'll look like the leaves are behind the flower instead of on top of the flower. I have two big flowers done and two leaves done and I'm going to continue to stamp this pattern off camera because it's just really hard to film and stamp such a big area at the same time but i'm going to do this whole piece of drop cloth that way i can pick out where i like the pattern the most and put that on my cushion i am finished stamping my fabric and it came out exactly like i imagined i absolutely love it i did not worry too much about having the flowers the same way or the leaves the same way i just did one big flower and one smaller flower and then the leaves and then continued on just making sure I had pretty negative and positive space and it is absolutely beautiful. I do have this mess going on over here so I need to clean that up but I am so so excited I cannot wait to put this on the chair. I'm gonna use my staple gun to attach the fabric to the chair. So I'm just going around and kind of smoothing it out and making sure it's nice and tight and just stapling it to the piece where the previous fabric was already stapled. I probably should have trimmed off some of this fabric before starting 
and I think that would have been a little bit easier, but overall, it was pretty easy to staple the fabric onto this chair. And then once my fabric was all stapled down, I just took my fabric scissors and trimmed off the excess. I ended up having enough extra fabric to make a cute little pillow to go along with this chair. I grabbed this trim at Hobby Lobby. It was $1.99, and it was a pretty off-white color, and I thought it would go great with this piece. I'm just going to apply it with hot glue and this will hide all the staples and the mess I have going around where I upholstered the chair. So occasionally I do create stuff and as it comes together, I'm just not feeling it. And that's what happened with this chair. Now, normally if I was selling a piece, I would just leave it and somebody would have loved it as is, but this is, piece is for me and my little Ren Lucille. And the more I looked at this chair, the more I felt like it really needed to be pink. And once you see the final result, I think you will agree. And actually brushing this chair came out so much better because it kind of filled in some of the imperfections that this chair had and made it look even nicer so i ended up just having to put one coat of pink on it didn't take long i had covered up the chair since i had already upholstered it and then i decided to go back and distress it so i let a little bit of that green come through a little bit of that white come through that way if little rennie lou naturally distressed it over time it would just kind of blend in and I'm glad I made this decision. I feel like it was the right one. I love how this chair came out in the end and I think it fits perfectly into her room. Go get it.